Okay, so it's three thirty. So let's get started with the session. Um, so this uh, whole session will be in English, where uh, uh, we will talk about uh, the e invoicing, uh, its impact on businesses in India, and how Zoho Books as a solution can help with the e invoicing needs for your business. Uh, before we get uh, started with the session, uh, this session runs on a platform called Zoho Showtime. So on your left, uh, you will see. Uh, panel where you have a questions tab and a chat tab. So in case if you have any questions, uh, please do drop your questions on only on the questions tab. And in case if you are facing any audio issue or video issue, please drop those requests in chat tab so that your regular communication and the questions doesn't get inter interlinked. So again, I wanted to repeat: uh, please drop your questions in the questions tab. So. Um, you know, e-invoicing is getting. Uh, uh, government has rolled out an announcement that e-invoicing will be compulsory for businesses starting uh, from October. So this is going to be a very important notification that government has rolled out. And uh, in order to cover those aspects, we are hosting the session for our audience as well as the public audience. Uh, here, uh, I'm joined by uh, Mr. Uh, Pritam Mahore. So Pritam uh, is an internationally recognized speaker, a writer, an advisor on GST and uh, how to be future proof uh, he has authored more than 15 books uh, which provide practical advice on optimizing gst and vat so uh, he has also uh, been invited uh, to be a part of a columnist for leading media houses such as business line asia age business standard at economic times times of women and so on uh, he has addressed more than 200 conferences uh, on gst and vat in multiple countries such as india uae oman uh, for uh, multiple governing bodies like ICAI, CII, uh, ASOCHAM, NASO, NASCOM, uh, DCCI, and so on. So it is a, a big pleasure in inviting you, Mr. Pritham. Uh, the floor is yours. Yes, thank, thanks, Mr. Swami, for this kind words of introduction. And uh, we are thankful to Team Zoho for this wonderful opportunity given to us to share our views on e-invoicing. Uh, so Mr. Swami, uh, can you please uh, share the presentation? Uh, uh, sir, I, I'll, what I'll do is I'll hand over the session to you. You can just do a screen share session, sir. Wonderful. I can do that. I have transferred uh, the session control to you. You can yes. do a screen share and you can go ahead, sir. Uh, share material. Screen share. Wonderful. Super. I hope the screen is visible now. Uh, it's getting connected. It's getting connected, Pritam. Yeah, it's visible now. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Good. So, friends, as we have seen that uh, uh, e-invoicing was introduced way back in 2020, and in the last two years, when the government started the phase of e-invoicing, initially it was made applicable only for entities who were having turnover above 500 crore. And within just two years, all of us can see that the limit is brought down right up to 10 crores because from 1st of October 2022, GST e-invoicing would be applicable for entities who are having turnover above 10 crore. And that is a clear indication that the government is basically pursuing this concept of digital India and even, even when it comes to GST. And because e-invoicing is seen as one of the major reforms by the government, we need to understand as to what is e-invoicing and obviously how it is going to impact us. So we were saying, first let us understand quickly what is e-invoicing. All of you know e-invoicing is basically nothing but electronic form of invoicing. And the most important thing which we need to understand, e-invoicing is not just a PDF document because we always used to have the normal invoices which we used to convert into PDF. So it is not, PDF document is not e-invoicing. That is what we want to uh, highlight at the start itself. Friends, the next question which will come to your mind is basically why the government is pushing this concept of e-invoicing in India. So for that we need to understand that we are not the very first country to introduce the concept of e-invoicing in India. Numerous other countries have already introduced this concept. And why governments across the world are preferring e-invoicing including India is that the basic reason is the various GST related or VAT related frauds which take place across the world. All of you know and you would have heard about this fake invoicing, bogus billing and all these kind of concepts. And that's the reason the government want to get the data of invoices on a real-time basis. 
And once you start sharing this data of invoices on a real-time basis, effectively the government knows on a real-time basis what are you purchasing and what are you selling to your customer. Additionally, once you share data with the government in an e-invoice format, the machines can read the data and if there's any unscrupulous activity which is ongoing, the machines can highlight that part to the government and the government can take the action at a real uh, time basis, I would say. Additionally, when you look at the fact that if you really want to understand any particular business, then one can always say that invoices are pulse of the business. And through the mechanism of invoicing, the government wants to get hold of your pulse. That is the pulse of your business. That is, the government wants to know from whom you are procuring various goods and services and to whom you are selling various goods and services. Most of you might say that, sir, to data. this data we are already sharing by way of GSTR1 and in our 2A or 2B, the data automatically gets populated. So why the government is looking for capturing this data on a real-time basis? Because we are anyway submitting the data on a monthly basis through GSTR1. Why so much hurry? Then friends, please note, as far as the month of June is concerned, you will be uploading your GSTR1, that is your output supply return, for the month of June on 11th of July. So effectively, there is a delay of more than 40 days. But when it comes to fake invoicing, the government wants to curtail these cases of fake invoicing to the minimum level possible. And that's the reason they are saying, we don't want to wait for 40 days, rather we want the data of invoices on a real-time basis, so that if there is a need on our part to take any action, then we can take that on a real-time basis and we can curb this menace of uh, fake invoicing. Friends, as I mentioned that e-invoicing is already introduced globally, but the most important factor we need to understand that across the world, most of the countries, be it South Korea, be it European Union, they always give a substantial amount of time for taxpayers to prepare for e-invoices. Unfortunately, when it comes to India, we have seen and witnessed that typically government will give you just a couple of weeks time to enable you to get ready for e-invoices. And that's where the role of entities or companies who are very known, well-known, in the field of e-invoicing becomes very important for all of you to know and that's the reason tools which are being provided by Zoho would be of great help to you because you need to get ready in a very short span of time. As I speak today, we are on 7th of September and all of you know that from 1st of October, e-invoicing would be applicable. 1st of October, e-invoicing would be applicable 1st of October 2022 for companies, for taxpayers whose turnover is about 10 crore. So if any, if in any previous year, right from 1718, that is 1718, 18, 19, 19, 20, 2021, and 21, 22, if your turnover was more than 10 crores, then you are supposed to issue e-invoices from 1st of October 2022. Few of you might say, Ki, sir, is there a possibility of this date getting extended? So friends, please note, this is not the first time government is introducing e-invoicing in India. This is basically a fifth phase of e-invoicing because before that, the government has already implemented four phases of e-invoicing successfully. So the possibility of this date getting extended is minimal. So as a tax payer, all of us need to rather prepare for ensuring that we comply with this important provision rather than thinking, will this date get extended? And that's the reason, Fred, I would say, after this session, the first thing which you need to do is to start thinking, how can you be ready if invoicing is applicable to your business from 1st of October 2022? Friends, please note that once invoicing is applicable to your business, then it is not the end of the journey, rather it is start of the journey. Once it is applicable to your business, then you are supposed to issue invoices from that date onwards till your company is operational. If your company gets closed, then that would, I would be saying that that would be the last date. But till your company is into existence, till eternity, you are supposed to then comply with invoicing. Friends, few of you might say that whether invoicing is another version of future Inspector Raj, because you would have heard this word Inspector and Inspector Raj. In good old days, way back in excise era, there was a person who used to sit in front of your factory, within the factory. And whenever goods used to be cleared, he used to countersign that invoice. Now, these physical inspectors are removed. There are, this, it is an era of, like say, from physical inspector 
uh, era we moved to document based uh, era in exercise time all of you know that the reviews which uh, were carried out the audit which were carried out by the department they were based on the documents and now we are moving to a digital era so physical assessment document based assessment and now we are moving to a digital based assessment and that the reason the first step which the government has taken for this kind of digital based assessment is e invoicing and that the reason i am mentioning on this slide that one can say that e invoicing is nothing but future inspectors and friends please note e invoicing is a start in days to come the government will even mandate they may mandate e payments and most of you might be doing already e payment and in days to come there might be even e agreements and that would be the final stage because in any business these three things are important agreements invoicing and payment if everything becomes digital all that data will flow to the government on a real time basis and on a real time basis then they can carry out audit of your business and that's where the government wants to reach so please note e invoicing is just a start in days to come we might even have e agreements in place so friends because e invoicing is a change with respect to technology but at the same time it is also change with respect to the gst law we need to understand there are numerous provisions which we need to know for e invoicing purposes i would say that there are these kind of act the, uh, on the which are appearing on your slide there these are the section which you need to know these are the rules which you need to know these are the notification which you need to know and this is the website of the government which you need to know but we are going to summarize all that in the next 5 to 10 minutes for you to understand and simply uh, 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 basically practically understand as to how e invoicing is going to work so friends when it comes to e invoicing the most important rule which should come to your mind should be rule 48 sub clause 5 rule 48 sub clause 5 says that if as a taxpayer you are supposed to issue a e invoice and all of you know as we discussed if your turnover is above 10 crore from 1st of october 2022 then you are supposed to issue a e invoice now if you are supposed to issue a e invoice and you don't issue a e invoice to your customer then the biggest impact would be that your customer may not be in a position to claim input tax credit that means your document that is invoice which is issued by you if you are issuing a normal invoice instead of the mandated e invoice by the government then the document which is issued by you will not be treated as an invoice it will not be treated as a invoice and automatically if it is not treated as invoice then input tax credit to that extent may be denied to your recipient to your customer and that the reason as a supplier all of you need to keep in mind that if you are supposed to issue e invoices that is once e invoicing is applicable to you that is once your turnover is above 10 crore in any of the five years which we discussed then in such cases you must mandatorily issue e invoices to your customer from 1st of october 2022 else input tax credit could be denied to your customers now friends please note e invoicing related certain exemptions have also been given by the government the most important exemption is with respect to scz units please note exemption is to scz unit not to scz developer then if you are insurance company banking company financial institution nbfc gta if you are a passenger transport service if you are a multiplex company then in such cases e invoicing is not applicable to you so if your business into any if you are dealing into any of this business then please note you don't have to worry about complying with e invoicing and if you want to understand why this exemption has been given to certain businesses please note that typically if you look at the businesses banking company gta insurer insurance company multiplex company typically the customers of these companies would be b2c and b2c that is business to consumer uh, cases typically consumer would not be claiming credit because he is not registered and that's the reason government has given these kind of exemptions now if you know that to these business entities e invoicing is not applicable the next question which will come to your mind would be to whom it is applicable as we discussed it is going to be applicable for all the companies all the taxpayers whose aggregate turnover is above 10 crore and this e invoicing requirement would be applicable from 1st of october 2022 that's the date which you need to keep in mind now once i say aggregate turnover the next question which will come to your mind would be what is covered under the term aggregate turnover friends please note that the term aggregate turnover is defined under gst law at section 2 sub clause 6 
an aggregate turnover is defined to mean basically all your turnover including all your taxable supplies and your exempt and export supplies even any supply which you make to your entity to your distinct person who is located in another state even that needs to be included plus your turnover on all india basis needs to be included and that is what you need to keep in mind that this aggregate turnover is basically means turnover of your all supplies including your exempt supplies because sometimes people confuse this term aggregate turnover to say that it only means your taxable supplies but please not friend aggregate turnover includes even exempt supplies as well further the most important thing is you are supposed to look at turnover of last 5 years from 1718 So 1718, 1819, 1920, 2021, 2021, 2022. If in any of these five years, if in even one single year your turnover is above 10 crore, then please note e invoicing is applicable to you. So please note you are supposed to have turnover above 10 crore in any one of the five years. So if in 1718 your turnover was 12 crore and subsequently. For last four years, your turnover is just two crores. Still, in that case, please note e invoicing is going to be applicable to you. So you need to keep that in mind, friends. As a facilitation measure, the government has done one very good job. They are saying that if you are GST registered person, then you can go to this website and you can click on this link, and then the government will tell you based on your GST R one and three B filing whether e invoicing is enabled for you or not. So typically, if your turnover is about ten crore, the government would have enabled e invoicing for you. Uh, Friends, please note uh, that this is a facility. In certain cases, we have seen that mistakenly, even somebody whose turnover is below ten crore, even in his case, e invoicing, uh, this enable enablement has been done. Uh, Pritham ji, the government has subsequently Hello? clarified in a right manner that e invoicing enablement does not mean e invoicing is applicable to you. So, if by mistake the portal says that invoicing is enabled for you, that does not mean that invoicing is applicable for you. That is what you need to keep in mind. So, basically, once we say that invoicing is applicable, and because the name of the term of this or because the name of this technology change is invoicing, most of the time some of the people believe that this change is applicable only to invoices. If I am issuing debit note and credit note. then e invoicing is not applicable to me but the government has clearly clarified that if e invoicing is applicable to you then every debit note every credit note which you are going to issue after 1st of october 2022 you are supposed to issue that in e format only so that the most important thing all of us need to keep in mind that in spite of the fact that the change technological change or the name of the change is basically e invoicing please note you are supposed to issue e debit note and e credit note once e invoicing is applicable to you from 1st of october 2022 if your turnover in any of the last 5 years was more than 10 crores friends e invoicing is applicable for all b2b supplies business to business business to business means A GST registered payer is issuing invoices to another GST registered payer, and typically in this case, input tax credit would be transferred from one person to another. And that's the reason. In case of B to B invoices, e invoicing is applicable. E invoicing is also applicable for export transaction. E invoicing is also applicable for deemed export. E invoicing is also applicable in case of government entities. So once you are turn over. threshold once you cross that threshold then e invoicing is applicable for all your business to business transaction friends please note you are not supposed to issue e invoices to in certain scenario when you are supplying goods or services to a consumer that is b to c transaction e invoicing is not applicable in case of bill of supply that is in case of exempted supplies on which there is no gst government says we are not interested in getting that data from you because why the government should get invoicing data for exempted supplies because on that there is no gst payable correct so the government says we want to get invoicing data or we want to get invoices data from you once e invoicing is applicable to you if it is a b2b supply because you are transferring input tax credit and second it is a taxable supply 
that means there should be some gft which is applicable on that invoice in such cases only you are supposed to issue e invoices friends when you look at e invoicing as a process you will be able to understand and my colleague from zoho uh, chitraji will certainly share uh, much more light on this particular uh, uh, process but i will just briefly share with you from accounting background as to what is going to be the major change you can understand that typically this is going to be the business flow business flow of a transaction that you will agree or you will sign agreement with your customer then you will create invoice you will generate the eba bill you will supply those goods then you will file your gst r1 3b and all the process will continue so typically before e invoicing is applicable you are supposed to follow these nine steps and after e invoicing is applicable these three steps will get added and which will be elaborated by my colleague from zoho in some time friends when it comes to e invoicing please note that e invoices are supposed to be issued and generated only by the supplier in contrast to eva bill because in case of eva bill a supplier a recipient or even a transporter can issue eva bill but when it comes to e invoices it can only and only be issued by supplier themselves and that is very important thing which you need to keep in mind so friends with this we are now through with our basic discussion on e invoicing if there is any question which you have feel free to raise the same during the session or after the session now i will request my colleague from zoho to take the discussion forward and she will elaborate uh, on uh, the technical points uh, uh, related to e invoicing so thanks uh, thank you so much sir i guess after you have briefed uh, people i have posted a few questions on chat tab and questions tab we'll take each and every question during the q and a session sir uh now uh chitra uh, 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 our product expert from zoho uh, will brief on the capabilities of zoho books uh, how e invoicing can be done in zoho books over to you chitra yeah so a very good afternoon to all the participants who have joined the session today so about the next uh, 20 minutes i will initially give you a, a brief on what is actually zoho books and after that we will see how e invoices can be generated from zoho books on the click of a button So I'll just quickly share my material. So I believe my uh, my screen is visible to uh, all the participants. So to people who are new to Zoho Books, I'll just give you a brief on what are the key features that Zoho Books can offer. So to get started with, Zoho Books is an end-to-end -end accounting solution which is totally cloud-based. and in the means of saying accounting like you'll be able to streamline your receivables your payables you'll be able to track your inventory you'll be able to generate powerful reports and above all this zoho books allows you to stay gst compliant and as you see here these are some of the key benefits that zoho books could offer so to start with you'll be able to easily create invoices from zoho books and we also have uh, like powerful integration with payment gateways So, using those integration, you'll be able to receive your payments from your customers, and not just with regards to receivables. You'll also be able to uh, manage your payables. So, we have connected banking. So, using uh, like we are partnered with certain banks. So, using which you'll be able to initiate your vendor payments right from Zoho Books itself. And uh, other than this, as we already saw, you'll be able to manage your inventory. You can generate powerful reports and GST filing, e invoicing, and e payables. All these are possible from Zoho Books. and as you see here zoho books is a gsp which is we are a gst suvidha provider so it is possible to file your gst returns from zoho books so we do support gstr1 filing gstr3 b and gstr9 and for reconciliation we support gstr2 b as well and any new mandates which are uh, brought forward by government we do have a team of experts who continuously monitor it and the respective uh, mandates and uh, whatever guidelines are laid by the government we do update them in zoho books as well so zoho books is e invoicing ready and also audit trail compliant so you'll be able to generate e invoices right from zoho books on the click of a button and once uh, you send the invoice detail to the irp in return you'll be getting the qr code the irn number the acknowledgement number and acknowledgement date which can be once again sent across to your customers right from zoho books on the click of a button once again so having said this uh, we also have uh, applications device specific applications 
So not just from laptops, you'll be able to do all these functionalities on any kind of device, be it a mobile phone or a tablet or a laptop that you possess. So you can always uh, have your finances on your hand by using our uh, applications and you can have access to the financial health of your business at any point of time and from anywhere. So having seen the basic features of what Zoho Books could offer, we will quickly jump on to the main topic of our session, which is e-invoicing. So as we all know, the government has provided a sandbox environment using which you can initially test how to generate e-invoices from Zoho Books. So we'll be showing you, like we'll be uh, sharing our screen and we will show you how you can create an account in the sandbox portal, how you'll be able to connect Zoho Books to the sandbox environment and how you can test the process of e-invoicing. So once you're confident on this process of how you can connect to the sandbox portal and you can create uh, e-invoices from Zoho Books, you can connect your live Zoho Books organization to the live IRP. You can just follow the similar process and you'll be able to create invoices easily from Zoho Books directly. So without any further delay, I'll just share the process on how to generate invoices from Zoho Books. To make the taxpayers understand the process, the government has provided a sandbox environment to test the process of e-invoicing. The e-invoicing sandbox portal is an API testing portal with which you can test the invoicing system before connecting with the IRP directly. To begin with, let us see how to create an account in the e-invoicing sandbox portal. Go to the link einb-apisandbox.nic.in slash einb api client. Click on register here. Under the user type, select taxpayer and enter your GST number. Based on the GST number, the trade name field will be auto-populated with your organization name by the GST portal. Next, enter your mobile number and email ID that is registered under the GST portal for the GSTIN mentioned above. Enter the CAPTCHA and click on Validate. The details that are mentioned above will be validated. Click OK in the pop-up window that follows. Now. Click on Send OTP and click OK in the pop-up window that appears next. Enter the OTP received on your registered mobile number and click Submit. Once the OTP has been validated, the form for creating a new account in Sandbox will be displayed. In the Create Account form, the GST number of your organization will be auto-populated. In the Registration Through field, select GSP and select the company as Zoho Corporation from the drop-down. The client ID will be provided by Zoho if you wish to test the e-invoicing through Zoho Books. Next, enter the username and password using which you would be logging into the Sandbox portal. Finally, click Create. This will create an account for you and these credentials can be used to log into the Sandbox e-invoicing portal. Now let us see the process of generating e-invoices from Zoho Books. Before getting started on e-invoicing from Zoho Books, we recommend you to create a new trial organization under Zoho Books to connect to the e-invoicing sandbox for testing purposes. Once you understand the process, you can connect your live Zoho Books organization to the live IRP. It is not recommended to connect your live organization to the sandbox environment. Let us assume that you have created a new organization in Zoho Books. You can share your organization ID with us and we will enable the sandbox testing for your Zoho Books organization. Once we enable it, you need to do a one-time setup to start generating e-invoices from Zoho Books. Go to Settings, Preferences and select e-invoicing from the left pane. Enable the e-invoicing in Zoho Books option and click connect now next to the GST number for which you will be generating e-invoices. Enter the username and password that you mentioned while creating an account in the IRP sandbox portal and click on save and validate. When the validation is complete, a connection between Zoho Books and the e-invoicing sandbox portal will be established. Let's do some setup in the invoice templates to support the e-invoice document. Invoice templates is a section where you could configure the look and feel of the invoice PDF you would generate. Let us edit the template to accommodate the IRN and the QR code. Click on the footer section and enable 
the QR code, IRN, acknowledgement number and acknowledgement date fields. Once done, save the changes. Now that we have connected Zoho Books to the e-invoicing sandbox portal and made the necessary changes in our invoice templates, we can proceed to create invoices and have it pushed for e-invoice generation. We can create a new invoice under the sales module. We will select the customer and make sure that the shipping and billing address is available along with the GSTIN of the customer. Place of supply, invoice date and invoice number will be auto-populated. You can make the changes if required. As you see, these are mandatory fields and cannot be missed. Next, we will select an item. Ensure it has the HSN configured. Select the rate and quantity and the tax will be auto-populated based on the item configuration. Now that the required details are added, we can save this invoice. Once the invoice is saved, we can view the created invoice in the overview section. The status will be shown as yet to be pushed. We can double check the invoice details and, and then push this to the IRP. You get a pop up with two options to either generate e invoice or to generate e invoice as well as e -wable. Based on your requirement, you can choose the option you prefer. For now, I am choosing push only invoice details. If the invoice has all the relevant details, the invoice will be successfully pushed to the IRP and the IRN invoice registration number will be generated. The status will be changed to pushed. The invoice registration number generated along with the QR code will be shown on the invoice document. In case if you miss out on any fields, the e-invoice will not be generated and the reasons for the failure will be shown on top of the invoice. The status of the invoice will be shown as failed. We can edit the invoice and make the necessary changes and repush it to the IRP portal. In case if the e-invoice has to be cancelled, it can be done so within Zoho Books. The e-invoice will have to be cancelled within 24 hours. When you cancel the e-invoice in Zoho Books, it will be cancelled in the IRP as well. You can provide the reason and remarks on why the invoice is cancelled. If you have lapsed the 24 hour limit, you will have to manually cancel the e-invoice in the GST portal and mark it as cancelled in Zoho Books too. So, an invoice could be at different stages, yet to be pushed, pushed, cancelled, etc. We have multiple views to check the status of your invoices. Let's see pushed for e-invoicing view. As the name suggests, it would show all the invoices which you have successfully pushed for e-invoicing. Next, we have yet to be pushed. These are the invoices which are yet to be pushed. Over here, we also have the option to select multiple invoices and have it pushed to IRP for e-invoicing generation. Next, we have a view to check the failed transactions. This would list the invoices for which the push was failed. You can make the necessary changes in the invoices and repush these. You will also be able to push the credit notes and debit notes to the e-invoicing portal from Zoho Books by following the similar process. You can also configure the user permissions for pushing and cancelling e-invoices under the Users and Roles section in Zoho Books. You can configure the permissions who will be able to push and cancel transactions from Zoho Books to the IRP. Not just this, for businesses that involve recurring invoices, you can automate the process of creating and sending e-invoices from Zoho Books with much ease. You can set up the preferences such that the transactions are automatically pushed to the IRP before sending it to your customers. Well, that brings us to the end of our e-invoicing walkthrough in Zoho Books. As you can see, e-invoicing can be done quickly and easily via Zoho Books. Once you are confident about the process of e-invoicing generation from Zoho Books, you can connect your live Zoho Books organization with live IRP. The steps would be the same as what we saw for sandbox testing. Yeah, so thank you everyone. Uh, I believe that you would have understood the process of generating e-invoices from Zoho Books. So as you saw, like during the past 10 minutes, generating e-invoice from Zoho Books is very much easy. 
So it is just that you have to mention all the mandatory fields that are required as a part of the invoice document. And once you click on the push to IRP button, you'll be able to see that within a few seconds, you'll be having the QR code and the required details, which will be affixed as a part of the invoice template. So uh, if in case you have any questions with regards to the process or uh, any other specific questions regarding Zobox, you can make use of the questions tab and post them, and uh, we will answer them from our end one by one. Uh, hello, Mr. Preetam. So uh, during the session, I have uh, collated few commonly asked questions uh, that can be answered by you because uh, being an expert, it will be uh, good that if you can answer these questions, sir. Uh, so the first question is, uh, how is e-invoicing eligibility calculated? So you are on mute, sir. See, e-invoicing eligibility is calculated based on your turnover, correct? Now, if in any of the past five years, be it 17-18 financial year, 18-19, 19-20, 20-21, and 21-22, if any, in any one of the five years, if your turnover was more than 10 crores, and this turnover means Aggregate turnover, as we discussed, aggregate turnover means your taxable supplies, your export supplies, your exempt supplies, and even supplies which you are making to your distinct person. All that needs to be included. And then you need to understand whether your turnover is about 10 crore. If the answer is yes, e-invoicing is going to be applicable to you from 1st of October 2022. I hope that answers the question. Okay, sir. Okay. And uh, is uh, e-invoicing compulsory for B2C transactions? No. As we discussed, e-invoicing is applicable only for B2B transactions. It is not applicable for B2C transactions. Okay. Because this, this is something that uh, many people have asked even before the session. I, I received a few yes. emails asking about this. So I wanted to clarify this during the session, sir. <laughs> See, we need to understand why government wants to introduce e-invoicing. As we discussed, see, there are few people, there are few fraudsters who are transferring the benefit of input tax credit to another entities. And these people are typically called as fake invoicing or bogus invoicing suppliers. So only in transactions where there is a transfer of input tax credit from one person to another, the government wants to have a look at those kind of invoices. If there is no GST applicable on that invoice, they are saying we don't mind because there is no transfer of input tax credit. And second is, if you are issuing invoices with the GST and your recipient is not registered for GST purpose, that means he is not going to claim credit, then also government is not interested in that data. Correct? So because government wants to track flow of input tax credit, they are saying B2B cases only we want that data. Okay. So to give you a simple example, a company like Big Bazaar, if you go and shop in Big Bazaar, your monthly provisions, they won't issue an e-invoice to you. Okay, sir. Okay. And uh, the other question is, uh, how come uh, a business can know that whether they are coming under this new slab, whether they're... It's a, see, GST law is a self-assessment law. So when you look at section 59 of GST law, it says... We need to calculate them on, on our own. So you have to take your financials of last five years and check whether e-invoicing is applicable to you. At the same time, please note the government has also made a facility available and which we showed on the presentation during the presentation that if e-invoicing is enabled for you, that means as far as government is concerned, as far as government data is concerned, the government is saying your turnover is about 10 crore. And in most of the cases, if the government is saying e-invoicing is enabled for you, that means you can assume that it is applicable for you in many cases, not all, but in many cases. So these are the two methodologies through which you can understand whether e-invoicing is applicable. Okay, sir. Uh, the other question that I received is, is e-invoicing compulsory uh, if both the parties are GST and registered or if only the, uh, if only the vendor is GST and registered? See, e-invoicing, see, we have to first see, the first step is whether my turnover is about 10 crore or not in any of the five years. That is up to 21, 22. Once e-invoicing is applicable to me, 
Then second important thing I need to see whether the invoice which I am issuing, whether it is a B2B invoice or B2C. B2B means my customer is registered for GST purposes. And B2C means he is a normal consumer. He is not registered for business or GST purposes. So if it is a B2B invoice, I am supposed to issue an invoice only in such cases. If it is a B2C invoice, he is not applicable. Even if my turnover is about 10 crore. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, the okay. other question is, uh, does stock transfer to warehouse uh, is included in, the, in this whole e-invoicing process? It is. It is. So you, you are in Maharashtra. E-invoicing is applicable to you. You want to do a tr stock transfer to, say, Gujarat. In such cases, you are supposed to issue e-invoice only. Okay, sir. Okay. And uh, uh, a couple of them ask, asked if, if it is okay to create backdated e-invoices. Uh, see, even if you uh, first, the system may right now, right now, it might be permitting, but all the data as to what is the date of invoice, when are you generating, that is right now available with the government because the day you generate a backdated invoice, that data also government knows, no? Because today you are uploading an invoice, which is dated like say a month back. So government knows that you are doing this kind of jugglery and they will immediately come to you for audit. So it is preferable for the companies, taxpayers, partnership firms to whom e-invoicing is applicable. They need to do it on a real-time basis. In case, in case, in exceptional scenario, if by mistake, if you missed issuing e-invoices, then in such cases you can generate e-invoices for the previous day or something like that. But as we discussed, take e-invoicing compliance on a very serious note because if you don't issue e-invoices when it is mandatory for you, the biggest problem would be that input tax credit would be denied to your customer. And then after two to three years, if the credit is denied to the, your customer during audit, the customer will come back to you asking for tax, interest, and penalty. And that's the reason take invoicing compliance very seriously, I would say. Okay, sir. I'm going to project a question. Okay, sir. I'm going to project a question. So, Nikhil has asked, a company has GST registration in many states. Will the turnover be counted for each GST separately mm -hmm. or must it be counted for entire country? Entire country. It is at a all India level. It is at a PAN level. Okay. And the other question is... Uh, uh, we do have uh, do we have to do e invoice for unregistered customers or overseas customers i guess you have already covered it so yes we have to do it for uh, export also okay and um, just going through the question sir yes mm -hmm. so can someone was asking basically what if my turnover exceeds during 20 to 23 whether e invoicing is applicable See, the government, the terminology which is used is basically previous year. So you are only supposed to see the previous year turnover and not the turnover. Uh, so, uh, Ani, Ani Mo has asked, can e-invoice, e-debit note or e-credit note which related with uh, before generating of e-invoice? Can uh, So this is a question from Ani Moon. Asking uh -huh. if uh, we can issue uh, e-debit note or e-credit note for invoices before uh, in, uh, before the invoices generated October. See, uh, one, see, first we need to understand from first of October, once e-invoicing is applicable to you if your turnover is about ten crore and all the threshold you are crossing. After that, whatever invoices, debit note, credit note you are issuing after first of October, even if the supply had taken place in the month of September and you are issuing a debit note in the month of October. Still, in that case, you are supposed to show e-debit note, e-credit note, or whatever it is. So that whatever document you are, which are going to flow to the government after 1st of October, they need to be electronic only. That is electronic debit note, e-invoicing, e-credit note, and e-debit note. I hope that clarifies. Yes, sir. So it's up. What is the process of cancelling? See, e-invoices, if somebody mistakenly generates an e-invoice, then within 24 hours, you can cancel it. After 24 hours, you can issue a credit note. So again, you have to issue e-credit note and you can, through e-credit note, you can cancel it. Uh, so, Anikeji, as we discussed, in mid-year, if there is a turnover increase in 20 to 23, you did not worry. You have to make e-invoicing available from next year only. 
but in such cases we will strongly recommend aniket ji for you to write a email to gst and portal or your jurisdictional officer informing them that my turnover is more than 10 crore which is in the current year but because in the previous year my turnover was less than 10 crore i would be issuing invoices from 1st of april 2023 so please drop that email so that during audit or anything subsequently if there is a question then you can say or you can inform them that see we had already intimated this part to the gst authority i hope aniket ji your question is answered so chilimesh ji e roasting time limit as we mentioned it is 24 hours you can cancel within 24 hours So, Ramaswamy ji, you can generate invoices uh, in foreign currency. If you want to convert that in INR, you can take the bank rate as well. Because yours is a case of service, you can do that. I guess we have, we have answered about cancelling or editing the invoice. Company has uh, two GST in same. Uh, uh, so, uh, Pritam ji, if a company has two GST in the same state, whether it is mandated to raise an e invoice? See, now they they would be distinct person. If they are distinct person for GST purposes, they are as good as a separate person. In such cases, e invoicing would be mandatory. And this is because they themselves have obtained two separate registration in one state. So, for all GST compliance purposes, they are two separate person. Typically, the basic principle is one state, one registration. One state, one registration. So, if I have only one registration, like say I have a presence in Pune, Mumbai, uh, and uh, Nasik, Aurangabad, which are all the cities which are in uh, Maharashtra only, then for GST purpose, I only need one registration. I just need to add all my other premises, warehouses, as additional premises. But I need to take only one registration. But if I am taking separate registration, because maybe it's a separate division or something other, it's a business uh, case, then in such cases, you are supposed to issue invoices or uh, supply to your own entities as well. I hope uh, almost yeah. most so, of the uh, questions so are. The yeah. invoice so, of export says it's easy to raise invoices with other currencies. Can businesses raise invoice in other currencies? INR. So what you have to do, you can convert that into INR and you can use your uh, general accounting statement. So whatever uh, rate you take for accounting purposes, you can take that rate also and convert that into INR. Uh, you cannot amend the invoices. You can only cancel it. Sir, uh, a gentle doubt that I came across over the period of time. Uh, so uh, the government notification uh, is that uh, e-invoicing is mandatory for businesses uh, of with more than 10 crore turnover from October. If my business has crossed my 10 over crore turnover uh, even in September itself, can I generate e-invoices from now on or should I wait till October 1st, sir? Uh, just, just one okay. minute. Huh? Just one minute. Yeah, sorry. See, if during, in the last, like say I started my company on 1st of April 2022 until turnover is 10 crore, then in such case, e invoicing is not applicable. It would be applicable from 1st of April 2023 in the next year only. Because for e invoicing purpose, I only need to see previous year turnover, not current year turnover. I hope that clarifies. Okay. Yes. And as we mentioned that if your turnover is increasing in between, please drop a line to your jurisdictional officer or GST and I think there is one service desk. You can drop an email to them also that my term is more than 10 crore during the year, but as it is going to be applicable from next year only, we are not uh, enabling our invoicing uh, requirement. That is what you can write an email to them. <coughs> Uh, 
Uh, Madhu Sudhan is saying, "My, I am into MRP products. I am giving fifty percent discount, and uh, MRP turnover process ten crore, but our net turnover below ten crore. See, for GST purposes, your transaction value is your turnover. So, if you are selling at fifty percent discount, means you need to take that transaction value. So, if hundred rupees product you are selling for fifty rupees, for you the transaction value is fifty only, not hundred." Because in GST there is no concept of MRP based valuation the way it was in excise. So you are only supposed to look at the value of turnover based on your invoices, not based on MRP. I hope Madhusudan T H G this clarifies. Uh, so this is one thing that uh, was discussed again. Uh, where should the QR code and IRN be mentioned? Is there any uh, confined place within the invoice? uh once you generate a qr code you are supposed to mention that on the first page itself if you mention qr code it is fine because qr code also has irn number but we have seen many people mention both qr code as well as irn so you are doing some extra compliance that is totally uh, fine so prasanas because qr code once you scan you can understand uh, the irn also from qr code uh, so prasanas is asking if we should generate e invoices for uh Service invoices with SAC code. Yes, yes, certainly SAC code is mandatory. Uh, and uh, sir, is there any um, minimum value for e invoice to be generated, sir? That's question from Anand. No, if it is a once your turnover is about ten crore, once you are issuing a B two B invoice, even if your invoice value is hundred, and you are going to charge GST on that, you are supposed to issue e invoice. Sumaya Sheikh ji is asking, uh, how do I know my vendor turnover is about ten crore? You can go to this e-invoicing portal and check on the on the basis of GST IN whether e-invoicing is enabled for him or not. Also, I think GST IN has made this facility available. You can go to your, you can log in and then you can check turnover of your vendors. It will give you a range, so you will be in a position to understand whether e-invoicing is applicable to him or not. Though it will not give you a hundred percent correct answer. But it will give you clues, and what we recommend that uh, if your vendor is not issuing e invoices, take a declaration from him that e invoicing is not applicable to them. Because tomorrow, if it is identified by the government that e invoicing was applicable to them, and they were issuing normal invoices, then as a recipient, your input tax credit claim would get zero parties, and that's the reason it is better for you today get declaration from all the people, all the suppliers of yours. Who are not issuing e invoices, saying that e invoicing is not applicable to them. See, Priti ji, as we said that e invoice you can generate and then you can cancel it within twenty four hours. So that you can do. I hope Priti ji, your uh, Priti to to answer the question. Uh, government has opened up sandbox. So, like what Chitra has mentioned during her session, you can create a trial organization with Zoho. Uh, connect your trial organization with the sandbox of the government portal and see how the whole e invoice environment is all about. And then from October first, you can connect your original organization with the uh, live IRP portal. I can you can start your e invoice. Uh, I guess and then. RCM cases, please note, reverse charge cases, e invoicing is not applicable. Uh, Your QR code is as good as a digital sign for e invoicing. There is no limit, like there is a limit in EV bill. No. Uh, if you are registered for GST, then only you can issue e invoices. If you have uh, turnover in two separate states, you are supposed to compute turnover on all India basis. So you have to take turnover of both the states together. Current said, "Ji, even if your turnover is exempted, but if it is more than ten crore, e invoicing is applicable to you." You will have to enable e invoicing, and you are supposed to issue e invoices only for B to B supplies on which GST is payable. Giriji, e invoicing is applicable to every company, 
every taxpayer, whether it is a firm, whether it is a company, whether it is a proprietor. So it is applicable to all. I hope, Giriji, it is it clarifies your question. Once uh, you are e invoicing this uh, iron number, it's a invoice reference number. It itself is a number, so obviously government is keeping a track of all the invoices which is issued by you. But as a company, when you are issuing invoices, you also have to have a serial number of your own. Once you unikaji cancel e-invoice within 24 hours, you have to forget about it. You don't have to worry. Tomorrow, if the government checks or during audit, they ask you, why did you cancel? You have to have a reason ready for that, why audit was cancelled. But uh, once you cancel e-invoice, you don't have to do anything about it. Yes, Madhavji, you can issue for B2B cases e-invoice and for normal invoice, you can issue uh, B2C cases, you can issue a normal invoice. Sumaya says he has few questions related to Zoho books. Yes. I think uh, Sumaya ji, you yes. can send that in the chat box and team Zoho will connect with you separately or uh, right uh, now. Uh, Mustafa, to answer your question, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so whenever you, cre when you, you re uh, create an invoice in Zoho books and you, you push that invoice to IRP and once it converts to e-invoice, the IRN is automatically generated and you can find that on the e-invoice. So uh, that is regard, regarding generation of IRN via Zoho books. And um, what's the other question regarding Zoho books? Yes, Brijanji, you are right. If you are an uh, exporter of service, you are supposed to issue e-invoices. Uh, so uh, sir, Abhishek is asking, can we issue e-invoice only on voluntary basis? I hope that is. No, right now this facility is not made available. Unless and until your turnover is about 10 crore, you cannot issue invoices. Maybe in days to come, months to come, the government might do that. But right now, if your turnover is about 10 crore in the previous five years, then only you are supposed to issue invoices. If it is not, you are not supposed to issue invoices. Uh, so Anand is asking, uh, can we can the invoice be physically signed and sent to client after generation of e-invoice? There is no need, but if you want, you can do that. Uh, uh, Mohammed, regarding this question, uh, we have something called as transaction locking, where uh, other users cannot edit or change any data after this hold uh, on any of your transactions. So, in case if you have, if you want a detailed information on this, uh, please connect via offline, and we can help you out on this. And, uh... I need either invoice or a disclaimer that invoicing is not applicable. Perfect, Nitinji, you are right. I need you either need to get invoices uh, from your custom vendor or you have to get a disclaimer that invoicing is not applicable. That you can do. You are right, Nitinji. Bhavik ji, as we mentioned, even for export purposes, you are supposed to issue invoices. Uh, so there's a question from Teja Shri. Uh, she's uh, saying that their turnover for the last fiscal year was uh, more than 10 crore. And uh, they are they are saying that their uh -huh. turnover won't get increased more than uh, uh, five crore for this year. So they are asking if they should they should. You know, it's applicable. Okay. Applicable. Applicable. So Sri Hari ji is talking about some setting we need to do. Uh, yes, Sri Hari. So uh, there is the what? if you go to settings, there are templates, and uh, if you go to templates, you can edit the template. And on that, uh, if you go to the footer section, over there, you can there's a checkbox called Enable for e-invoicing. And once you give that, you can enable uh, the checkbox for IRN, QR code, and digital signature. And from that point onwards, all your invoices will have the required e-invoicing template features. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, after the session, along with this uh, recording and the deck, we'll also share the help document link where you can see how you can enable e-invoicing for your uh, organization in Zoho books and how you can go proceed forward. Uh, so, so Krishna is asking how can we cross check our vendor has sent an e invoice or not? You can uh, this QR code you can scan. No, if there is a QR code on your invoice, that means he has sent you uh, an e invoice. If there is a QR code. 
you can say that it, it's a invoice so if there is no qr code so, uh, shrutika is asking we are in business of its uh, it services and we are doing only expo that also against lut so in that case is no yes you are supposed to issue invoices if you turn over if you once you cross this threshold of 10 crore you are supposed to issue invoices whether it is export whether it is domestic whether it is b2b whether it is b2g b2g means government in all such cases you are supposed to issue invoices uh, chandra uh, anike ji you are right that in case of export without lut uh, with lut there is no loss to recipient but the problem is that government has seen in certain cases there were frauds it was not actual transaction as export but it was declared as export and people then claimed refund of the input tax credit and that the reason the government is saying that even in case of export even if there is no uh, gst which is applicable on the output side still the government was to ensure that you issue e invoices on a real time basis uh, i am a partnership firm e invoicing is applicable has crossed 10 crore but as on the firm will be converted to a new company will e invoice be applicable see if you are a partnership firm ideally because the company's partnership firm is getting changed to a company ideally it should not be applicable vivek ji but uh, this is a unique question and that the reason see whenever you have a doubt whether invoicing is applicable or not and i will tell to all the participant also if you have a doubt and the answer is yes and no both borderline cases in such cases we will recommend you to issue e invoices So somebody's turnover is say 9.97, 9 crore 97 lakh, and he has a doubt. He says, "My turnover is 3 lakh below. Should I issue or not? Because there might be some exempted supplies and all those questions if he is having. In case of doubt, we will recommend you to issue e invoices. You enable yourself and issue invoices. Because tomorrow, if for some reason the government says no, 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 you are supposed to issue e invoices, then the biggest problem is for your customer, and that the reason in case of doubt. I will recommend you to enable your e-invoice module and issue e-invoices. I hope this clarifies. Hmm. Is it mandatory invoices to customer? Yes. I uh, see. Uh, Tanvi, you are supposed to issue or send uh, e-invoices to your customer so that they can check the QR code and all. Uh. Will you do it? Care of QR code generation? Ah, uh, yes. So. Uh, to answer the first question, yes, like I said, uh, once you enable e invoicing in your in your Zoho Books organization, you can change your uh, invoice template under the settings tab, and in that there's a checkbox called enable e invoicing where you can enable IRN QR code and signature, and once you save the template, uh, from from that point onwards, all the invoices will be an e invoice, and you'll find the IRN QR code in all invoices. And to answer Shankar Shant's question, can we push the e invoices? So IRP and EVA bill at the same time. Yes, you can do it. So when you push the invoice, uh, when you click on push to IRP, there will be a pop up inside Zoho Books where we we'll ask only push to IRP or push to IRP and EVA bill portal. So depending upon your necessity, you can choose either of the option. So I guess there is again a common question asking. Uh, is uh, e invoice only applicable uh, for B2B or B2C? I guess uh, Pritham uh, G has already uh, discussed about it. So as of now, it is only applicable for B2B transaction and export uh, transactions, not applicable for B2C. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Pritham. Yes, yes, only for B2B, not to B2C. Uh, so uh, a person is asking: Is uh, e-invoicing ap applicable for uh, government transactions, as in B2G transactions? B2G is yes, applicable. Somebody is asking whether the recording. Uh, yes, we are. We are actually recording the session. In a, so post the session after five to seven business days, we'll share uh, Mr. Preetam Ji's uh, deck along with our deck and along with the recording of the session. Wonderful. See all export cases. You are supposed to issue uh, e-invoicing. 
ஃபீல் ஸோ அந்த சைன் ரேட்டை அனுப்புவோம் I'm just checking few more questions here. Can we compile it here? Can we modify date of invoicing? No, you cannot. As we said, that in case of uh, invoicing modification, an amendment is not uh, available. That facility you can only cancel. most of our vendors are government entity so government is supplying you something so ideally it is applicable to them they are supposed to issue are they charging sumaya ji even gst uh, yes yes i charge then ideally yes uh, can you sumaya ji mention because we haven't come across what government entity you are saying like what kind of supply you are saying Harid ji, you cannot edit invoice. You can only cancel it. Time limit for cancellation is twenty four hours from generation. Yes, ARN and build date can be different, but as we mentioned, that typically you are supposed to generate invoices on a real time basis. So if there is a difference, authorities will certainly come to know that you have delayed. generation of invoicing which is so if somebody has raised an invoice today they have to push it to ir to today itself no sir if somebody has raised uh, an invoice today they have to push it to the irp by today itself right yes sir. today immediately correct even before you share to your customer you are supposed to inform to the government generate qr code and then only send that okay, invoice sir, that, that, that answers manish kumar sharma's question here so you should yes. uh, so you cannot uh, so when you raise an invoice from now on let's say you creating an invoice today we have to first push it to the government and then send it to the customer so that is the pro new process for e invoicing yes. correct see uh, this ms rdc and all these are a company they are not government they are government or maybe entity or something like that but they are not government per se so they are supposed to issue e invoices to you even public sector companies are issue supposed to issue e invoices to you physical digital signature is not required if you have a qr code whether we have been we are we taking e way bill now it is saying invoice is enabled but so shankar varma ji it is only informing you that it is going to be applicable from 1st october so it's a for your information kind of a update or alert which might be appearing when you are generating aw bill so you can just leave it that and on 1st of october onwards once e invoicing is applicable to you you can start issuing e invoices uh, uh, radha krishna ji uh, so Uh, before 24 hours you can cancel the invoice and after 24 hours uh, you have to go to the e invoice portal uh, to delete it or uh, to to create gst portal ah sorry gst portal to uh, uh, delete it or uh, to uh, you can create a credit note for it getting the same questions again so we can skip that yes i think we can and if there are any like say as the you can see on the slide there are couple of email ids if there is any question which remains to be answered you can send it across separately and we can come back to you separately on that and as we said that uh, ppt would be shared and recording also would be shared in the next i think next week or so yes so uh like pritham ji has mentioned uh, in case if you have any doubts regarding uh, e invoicing you can drop us an email at support.india@zohobooks.com uh, if you are looking to connect your um, account with the live irp portal or in case if you want to test out the sandbox capability of the government with zoho books then you can drop us an email on the procedure or uh, you can create a trial organization with zoho books and you can drop us your 
uh, email id and org id with our team and we can enable uh, the uh, zoho your zoho books organization and connect it with the sandbox portal and you can try out this whole e invoicing process uh, before uh, connecting uh, you know going ahead with e invoicing with the live environment so we can help you with uh, with those things and uh, in case if you have any questions you can like i said you can drop us an email or, or call us at at, at 18005726671 this is our toll free number and in case if you have any doubts we are also available on social media right from twitter to linkedin to facebook and facebook you can drop us your queries in any of the channels and our team will help you at the earliest and if you are someone uh, new to zoho then uh, you can go to zoho.com/books uh, where you can sign up for our uh, 14 day free trial and you can try zoho books for your accounting needs as well as your e invoicing needs um so i i, I hope we have answered almost all uh, new questions uh, we have only uh, so that is all done uh, we'll have another two more minutes for new questions and then we can wrap up the session okay uh, chandra bos uh, so sandbox is a test environment that government has opened uh, so for businesses who wants to know uh what is e invoicing how what is this whole procedure all about uh, government has created a separate environment uh, called sandbox environment where you can connect your zoho books account uh, or uh, your accounting software with the sandbox to see uh, to get uh, get accustomed to the whole process of creating e invoices so that is the sandbox environment uh if you are if you are, if you are if you want to directly create e invoices from uh, from get go then you can also directly register your uh, business uh, to the irp and you can start e invoicing sandbox is just an option provided by the government for businesses to try out before moving to the live environment it's not mandatory that you have to go via sandbox you can directly connect uh, your uh, zoho books account with uh, with irp and you can do your e invoicing from get go Uh, as far as uh, steps in connecting your zoho books account uh, with the irp portal uh, we have a separate help documents and uh, how to videos on youtube uh, we will share that along with uh, the presentations via email in 5 to 7 business days and we'll also upload this recording on youtube you can watch it at any any time and like i said in case if you have any doubts you can very well drop an email to support.india@zohobooks.com uh so uh, once again uh, thank you so much everyone for joining the session uh, we'll be doing more such sessions on e invoicing and how uh, zoho books can be of assistance uh, when it comes to getting businesses compliant to e invoicing uh, thank you so much pritham ji for uh, taking your time in joining the session uh, your uh, insights and your, Thanks, your points have been very valuable for all the businesses out here thank you so much yes.